Fox Sports. We are Fox. We are Minnesota. for the Twins are filled with question marks. The last 48 hours have been pretty good for the Twins. Today they'll try to complete a three-game sweep of the Cleveland Indians. A beautiful Sunday afternoon for baseball in Target Field. Dick and Burt with you for the series finale. When we left here last night, we knew the Twins were going to start a left-handed starting pitcher. We were mistaken, however, when we assumed it would be Francisco Liriano. Yeah, about an hour after the ball game last night, it was Francisco Liriano who was traded by the Twins to the Chicago White Sox for a couple 23-year-olds. But Liriano, in his career with the Minnesota Twins, I think everybody very, very proud of the way that he handled himself. He had so much potential here. He had a couple very good years when he first came up. It's been a struggle a little bit. So Brian Dunsing, an emergency starter. Dunsing last worked in Chicago where he worked four shutout innings in a start that uh, the Twins ended up losing. But they'd like to get maybe four or five out of Brian here this afternoon. Well, the fact that Liriano was traded didn't come as a surprise to Twins uh, officials or uh, their fans. But what the market was, was uh, up in the air. We weren't sure what the Twins were going to be able to get. Here is who they got. Yeah, Pedro Hernandez, I think the key in this trade. Eight and two in AAA. He made one start for the White Sox this year. Not a very good one, but it was at Fenway Park. And he's a left-handed pitcher from Venezuela. A lot of potential, good fastball, very good changeup, we are told. And then Escobar. Escobar, we saw him a little bit this year with the Chicago White Sox, a utility player, a switch hitter, known for his speed, more for his defense, not much of an offensive player, but a guy that hopefully will fit in nicely with the Twins. And uh, this past week, he was the guy, you may remember, who replaced Kevin Euclid at third base the last two ball games uh, at U.S. Cellular Field. A lot of reaction here at the ballpark. Frankie Liriano was a very popular pitcher for the Twins. We'll be back with more on that in a moment.
Minnesota Twins Baseball on Fox Sports North is brought to you by your local Northland Ford dealers. Visit your local Northland Ford dealer or go to NorthlandFord.com. And by Menards. Save big money on all your home improvement needs at Menards. The Twins have scored 23 runs and gotten some great starting pitching in their first two games against Cleveland. And now today we'll go for a sweep of the Indians. Hi again from Target Field. I'm Marnie Gellner. We've been talking about this trade that the Twins made last night of Francisco Liriano to the Chicago White Sox. Ron Gardenhire said he found out about it last night when he was driving home from the ballpark and got a call from Terry Ryan. Liriano has been with the Twins since 2006, and despite his ups and downs on the field, he was a very well-liked and respected guy in this clubhouse. He's been a stand-up guy for this organization. Um, you know, he hasn't ducked away from too many things. We all know about his struggles. We also know he's been one of the more dominant pitchers when he's on that we've had around here and can do a lot of fun things. No hitters, you know, striking out 15 plus or whatever. We love Frankie. I mean, he works hard. He, he no problems. And, and uh, the way he goes about his, his, his trade and uh, we love him and, uh, you know, and, and uh, you wish him the best. But uh, as a person, as a friend, as a teammate, yeah, we're going to miss him a lot. Liriano would have been the twin starter this afternoon. Instead, it will be Brian Dunsing going for a sweep of the Indians. Up next. And it is a beautiful afternoon for the Twins and the Cleveland Indians from Tar Target Field this afternoon. And we hope you'll join us either in person or in spirit on September 23rd right here at Target Field for a light the night walk to benefit the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. I'll be walking. Lisa Dunsing will walk in uh, representing her husband Brian and the Twins. Alicia Perkins representing her husband Glenn. And if you'd like to make a don donation or join us on our team, you can visit our website, foxsportsnorth.com, and we have all the details there. And in honor of that LLS walk, Austin Roberts, a 10-year-old from Minnetonka, was one of the ceremonial first pitch throwers this morning. His dad, Sean, just finished treatment for Hodgkin's lymphoma. And Austin turned 10 years old last May, and he asked that instead of getting birthday gifts, people instead make a donation to LLS. So by doing that, he raised $500. We'll be taking more donations and hopefully raising more money for that wonderful cause on September 23rd here at Target Field. But we are nearing first pitch now, and for that, we turn it over to Dick Bramer and Burke Lila. Well, thank you very much, Marnie. Absolutely gorgeous weather here for a Sunday afternoon series finale. 
Cleveland Indians have been thumped soundly in the first two games. Here's their Menards batting order for Sunday afternoon's game. Shinsu Chu leading off as Drubal Cabrera batting second. Then Carlos Santana, Jose Lopez, Michael Brantley, Shelly Duncan, Lou Marson, Casey Kochman, and Brent Lillibridge. And we talked about Liriano getting traded to the White Sox, so they needed somebody to start here this afternoon. And Brian Dunsing gets the call, making his fifth start. Now, Dunsing is facing a ball club, the Cleveland Indians, that has really struggled against left-handed pitchers. We saw them get shut out by Scott Diamond here on Friday night, hitting about 230 as a ball club. So, Brian Dunsing, he has very good numbers in his career against Cleveland making his sixth career start against the Indians where he's four and one over his career. Not a cloud to be found. Shin Su Chu on the first pitch grounds it to second. And Casilla throws him out. One down. Let's check out the Northland Fort defense for the Twins. Same outfield. Willingham span in Revere. In the infield, the same as last night. Valencia, Dozier, Casilla, and Morno. Behind the plate, it's Ryan Domit. That's the only change from last night's lineup. Joe Mauer DHing last night. Domit was the designated hitter. One very quick out, yep. and yep. here's Cabrera. You have to love that right there. Dunsing coming out of that bullpen, trying to get some quick outs, and Chu jumping on that first pitch for the first out. Now, Dunsing last pitched. When Liriano started that ball game in Chicago, Liriano went only into the third inning, and Brian Dunsing worked four shutout innings. Revere drifting back, three pitches, two outs. Dunsing making the start in place of Liriano, and like everyone else, a bit alarmed with the news last night. Well, this is uh, Brian Dunsing's uh, tweet right there. Just uh, just saw the trade news about Liriano. Sad to see him go. He was a great teammate and friend. Also found out that I am spot starting tomorrow. <laughs> so, you know, Brian Dunsing, I'm sure, slept well. But knowing that he came to the ballpark as a starter, where he has already made four starts in place of Liriano when Liriano was shipped out to the bullpen for a while. So Here's another opportunity to start a ball game for Dunsing. Carlos Santana goes after the first pitch and lifts it foul. This morning, Ron Garden hired non committal about Dunsing's future, whether it's in the rotation, out of the bullpen. Obviously, there's a spot open. Jeff Manship will be called up in time to be here for tomorrow's game, but Manship also kind of a swing guy for the Twins, pitching out of the bullpen, an occasional starter. And maybe it's no, no more uh, complex than if Dunsing does well here today. He'll get another start. Yeah, Manship came up in the late latter part of May, went into uh, June, and his last three or four outings as a reliever, not very good. He was sent down to Rochester, started, and he's been, he's had three very good starts down in Rochester. So we'll see what uh, Brian Dunsing does here this afternoon. If Brian Dunsing, he seems to pitch better as a reliever, but he still has starter type stuff, in my opinion. On the ground, Dozier with a nice pickup. And a quick one, two, three, first inning. And Dunsing had to throw a total of six pitches in the inning.
One two three top of the first inning the twins have a chance to score first here today. Let's take a look at the GMC keys to the game the twins have been red hot you know these two ball games here but over the last 12 ball games at home here at target field twins are hitting 330 17 home runs in those 12 ball games scoring a lot of runs 84 runs so hopefully they can continue that this afternoon. Ron Garden hired his win last night, his 100th over the Cleveland Indians. And the lineup will be facing Ovaldo Jimenez. Jimenez uh, in his first full season with the Cleveland Indians, coming over from the Colorado Rockies on a July 31st trade. Last year, when he's on, he'll get a lot of ground ball outs. Control has been an issue for Jimenez. Look at Jimenez and nearly six walks per nine yeah. innings pitch. Yeah, see the 69 walks and 116 innings pitch. Now he has pitched here at Target Field a couple times and both of them very good starts. He's two and one lifetime against the Twins. Both wins coming here. Once with the Rockies, once with mm -hmm. the Indians. Two and zero oh to span. You know, you say that to keep the bats going and all that, but. It would seem to me that the approach would be different today than it was last night or Friday in terms of your at bats uh, being aggressive Friday and Saturday, maybe being a lot more patient today. So Spam takes three pitches, gets into a hitter's count, and lines a sharp single to center. Menard batting order for the Twins Span on top, Revere hitting second, then Maurer, Willingham, Borno, and Domit. Valencia, Dozier, and Casilla. Well, even in last night's ball game, Masterson, I mean, he had walked probably about four or five per nine innings, so the approach was there. But in the first three innings, Masterson had a great sinker. Then he seemed like he got away from that game plan, and the Twins took advantage of some uh, mistakes that he made, especially that breaking ball to Willingham. And there, the offense took off from there. Revere takes ball one. Beers had a good series against the Indians. Span at first base, 10 stolen bases in 16 attempts. Lopez, the third baseman for the Indians here this afternoon, playing in on the grass and giving Revere the line. Touchman, good fielding first baseman. And there will be no return throw. Jimenez late getting to the bag. And so what should have been a double play is instead just one out. Cabrera was ready to return the throw to first base, but there was no one there. I'm surprised as Koshman comes off the bag and feels this that he doesn't go back to first base right there. He's got plenty of time, but you can see Cabrera waiting for the pitcher to get over there. And Koshman giving way. But Cabrera holds on to the ball, but the speed of Revere, too. I mean, he basically beat Jimenez over to first base. Here's Maurer, a sharp single, a hot one hop ground ball, and now we'll see what Maurer can do. Four hits in the series. And there goes Revere right away. Marson has no chance. A stolen base for Ben Revere. Stolen base number 23 on the year for Revere. He's been caught only five times. Got a great jump. Marson, good throw, good strong throw, but Ben Revere with that head first slide, getting that left hand on the bag and holding on to it. 1 and 0 to Bauer. Jimenez has failed to throw a first pitch strike so far. Speed pitch over for a strike. One and one. Mauer continues to hit, hitting 331, third best in the American League behind a Trout and Conurco. Hit to the outfield should score Revere from second base. Pick off to second, Revere back. Not a lot of at bats for these twins against Jimenez. Mauer just one for five, and that one hit did bring him an RBI.
Revere to third and there won't be a throw. So Revere again very aggressive on the base pass and he reaches on a fielder's choice. Should have been erased on a double play and now he's standing at third base. Yeah I got a great jump right here the one look back and there takes off Ben Revere and Marson has no chance as that looked like a breaking ball just off the tip of his glove. Ben getting a very good jump and another head first slide he gets into third with one out. You'll see the Indians now they're not bringing the infield in playing back so Joe just gets his ball by the pitcher. Hopefully on the ground he'll pick up an RBI. Two and one to Maurer infield playing back. We'll concede a run here in the first inning. Maurer just a turn on one and he fouls it back two and two. It looked like Paul Konerko was fading back until he had a torrid series against the Twins. He's continued to hit well in Texas. So he's a couple of points ahead of Maurer and Mike Trout right now at 350. Yeah, some good names on that board right there. Very, very good hitters. Two and two to Maurer. High and tight with Willingham on deck. Yeah, Menace has a fastball they can get up in the upper 90s. He'll mix in a hard slider and then a changeup. Full count to the Twins designated hitter. Got him with a high fastball. So Jimenez strikes out Maurer and for the time being at least Revere left at third. Oakland four defense for the Indians Duncan Brantley and Chu in the outfield Lopez Cabrera Lillibridge Kochman and Lou Marson behind the plate. Jimenez picking up a big strikeout for the second out is 89th strikeout and 117 innings pitched. Well, the Twins throughout this series have been getting a lot of two out hits. They will need one here from Willingham. Down and away, ball one. Home runs already in this series for Willingham, 27 on the year. Breaking ball, hammered to short. Cabrera has the play. And he throws him out. The Twins leave a runner at third. No score after one. Nothing, nothing for the Indians and the Twins at Target Field. The Twins are not the only ones looking for a big win today. Helen Price of Elk River played the Minnesota State Lottery Million Dollar Match Game today, and she won $10,000. Selected Twins fans that played along with Helen also walked away with scratch ticket and prizes. 
Those fans were in section 131, rows 14, 15, and 16. Play the million dollar match game and you can win up to a million dollars instantly. How about that, Dick and Bert, though, wow. for Helen Price? Ten thousand dollars credit target field this afternoon very very nice thank you very much marty and we get excited when we get a trivia answer right mm -hmm. <laughs> here's jose lopez ball one strike one facing brian dunson tapper foul one and two lopez the third baseman is hit clean up for the indians it's been a sore spot in their batting order because they've run so many Hitters through there, and they really haven't gotten cleanup type production from any of them. Travis Hafner, Carlos Santana, and Lopez. They're just missing that big bopper. Particularly from the right side of the plate. Mm -hmm. Check swing, no swing. Yeah, I mentioned that the Indians have struggled against left handed pitchers, and the Indians hitting only 220 as a ball club. Right handers against right handers hitting 271. To center. Playable for Span. One down. That'll bring up Michael Brantley. Well, the Indians coming into this series on a high note, taking two out of three from the Tigers and beating Justin Verlander for the second time Thursday night, but they've absolutely been bludgeoned in the first two games here. The Twins getting out of last place. They're a game ahead of Kansas City and you know, the Indians still considered the contenders below 500, and they're uh, seven and a half games ahead of the Twins. Yeah, five and a half games in third place behind the Chicago White Sox. We're playing very good baseball. We've won our last five straight. The White Sox come in here tonight after playing a night game in Texas. Here's Brantley. Ball one, strike one. The White Sox had listed. As their starters for the three game series starting tomorrow night, Jose Quintana, Jake Peavy, and Chris Sale, but it's uh, probable that Francisco Liriano will be inserted in there somewhere. That'll be kind of weird, won't it? There's a chopper back to Dunson. Two down. Before Duncan comes to the plate, Sundays in Fox Sports North. Join Tom Brokaw for Boys in the Hall, the personal stories of some of baseball's greatest legends. And the feature this week is on another really good left handed pitcher, Warren Spahn. Boys in the Hall, after the game, presented by Subway Restaurants, where winners eat. Yeah, it will be weird. More for Liriano, I think, than, uh, you know, anybody else coming, coming out from the visitors' dugout here at Target Field rather than the home dugout. Here's Shelly Duncan. You know, from the White Sox perspective, the trade is, is it makes perfect sense. Chris Sale, they've said, is going to have his workload watched very closely in the final two months because he's converting from a relief pitcher to starter. And then, you know, the news just doesn't seem real good regarding John Danks, their opening day starter, another lefty. Mm -hmm. Gavin Floyd didn't look good at all when he faced the Twins. Uh, in Chicago last week. One and one. And the White Sox are the division leader. Tigers having a tough time scoring runs again right now. They're two and a half back. Dozier picks it off, picks himself up, falling down. He throws safe at first. A two hop throw to Morno not in time and Duncan gets an infield hit. Well, a nice attempt right there by Dozier going to his right and has to make a diving play. And then when he came up right here he tried to do it all in one motion but threw the ball in front. You see where it landed right there a two hopper to Morno. But a great effort right here by by Brian Dozier. That'll bring up Lou Marson. First pitch fastball in ball one. Marson in his fourth season with the Indians, originally signed by the Phillies, came up with the Phillies in 2008. Known more as a defensive catcher than an offensive catcher, but hitting a 266 this year. Little nubber, Dozier charges, fires on the run. Morno with the catch, and that's it for the Indians in the second inning.
over the Indians. Yeah, Twins looking for their third sweep of the year. If they're able to do that this afternoon. A lot of ugly stats for the Twins this year. This one doesn't sound too bad. If they can win here today, they'll be a 500 club within their division. 19 and 19. Morno takes a strike over the inside corner. Domit and Valencia will follow. Foul back two strikes. Through his major league career in a very good first half with the Rockies a couple of years ago, Jimenez has averaged about four walks per nine innings pitch. Mm -hmm. This year it's almost six, and that's been one of the problems. As he hopes to get it together here and keep the Indians in a race. By six foot four, he just kind of throws everything at you. He's got that long delivery, the long arms. There's his career numbers in 168 major league starts, 10 games over 500. He had that one great year in Colorado where he won 19 ball games. Another sharp single to lead off an inning, this one by Morno. Given all those numbers, the high walk total, Tim Laudner probably critical for the Twins that they uh, kind of wait this guy out a little bit. Well, they need to. They've had a great offensive attack against the Indians the last couple of nights. Today might be just a little bit different, maybe a little bit more patient. Ovaldo Jimenez does have a propensity to walk guys, so you want to make sure that when you get up in a hitting situation that you get a good pitch and take a rip. We just saw that with Justin Morneau. Yeah, wait for that one pitch that that's pretty straight. That's a straight fastball right there. But at six foot four, he does create that good arm angle if you can get that ball down in the strike zone. And by the way, that's a good word by Tim Wagner. Propensity. It's the first time on Twins te uh, television that word's been used. So nice going, Tim. I thought I'd just see if Bert was <laughs> after his vacation, if he was awake, if he was focused. Oh, I'm awake. I just you know you hear words that you've never heard before and. You just kind of let them pass. Hey, it's at Park Center High School Education at work right there, Timmy. How yes. about that, fellas? 2 0 oh to Ryan Doman. Took me six years in high school to get that education. It was awesome. 3 0. Oh. The Indians are now about where they were a year ago at the trading deadline. They were two and a half games back then. And they pulled the trigger on a big trade, bringing Jimenez over. They gave up a couple of top pitching prospects, a couple of other players, but the prominent names, Alex White and Drew Pomerantz, to bring Jimenez over, hoping that he could be the difference maker. And the trade consummated, there's another long word, consummated on the 31st of July. And then Jimenez came over and didn't pitch real well. Four and four with an ERA of over five. Yeah, and 11 starts. So, uh, you know, again, a couple of years ago, the starter in the All Star game for the National League. Doma draws a walk and a good start to the second inning for the Twins. And that'll bring up Valencia. You know, it's the type of trade I think fans. Imagine the twins making with Liriano, but the fact of the matter is, you know, there wasn't the, the market for Liriano that there was for Jimenez. The Indians were willing to give up two really top shelf pitching prospects to get this guy, and uh, the market for Francisco Liriano significantly softer. Well, you still don't know. I mean, the twins need pitching, and Pedro Hernandez, you look at his minor league numbers in the minor league combined with the Padres and the White Sox, he's 8 and 2 this year between double A AA and triple A, 33 and 13. Very good minor league numbers. So, Terry Ryan and his scouting staff, they find these young, talented kids that have that potential. Remember, Johan Santana from Venezuela, that was a Rule 5 player. Picked up. Liriano came from the A.J. Pruszynski trade with the San Francisco Giants. So that man right there, he does his homework. One and one to Valencia. One and two. A change up right there. Danny's job right here. Hopefully, both get both runners to their next base if possible. People who tweet or blog assessing the trade minutes after it happened last night. Uh, Need to sit back and understand this is one of those trades that's going to take years to analyze. One and two to Valencia. And a half swing. Did he go? 
Oh wow. Well, Tim Cheetah, the crew chief, saying that uh, Danny did not go too far. Valencia swung and missed in his first at bat last night. On a similar pitch, at very close to very a close. commitment there. Two and two. Valencia looking for a big hit here in the second inning against Jimenez. Swings and misses one away. And he went back to that slider and picks up a strikeout. His second. Struck out Joe Bauer in the first with a runner at third and one out. And here with a couple of runners on, nobody out. Goes to that slider in a good location. And Danny swings through it. So now Dozier. Twins had a great scoring chance in the first inning with Revere at third and one out. And the Indians were on contact conceding a run. Then Jimenez got the strikeout of Maurer. Now first and second, nobody out. Suddenly there's one out with Valencia fanning. There's a breaking pitch on the outside corner. Popped up, infield fly rule will be called. So Dozier retired two down and it'll be left to Casilla at every Twins game businesses of all sizes host their employees and clients for a fun night of baseball take advantage of all that Target Field has to offer your business group. The Twins are an inexpensive and simple way to entertain in a setting your employees and clients will be sure to enjoy. So you can organize your group of more than 25 today by calling 833 Twins. And ask about a Twins target field group outing. Well, it was left up to Casilla a couple times in last night's ball game, and he delivered a two-run triple and then later a two-run double. See if he can get a big two-out hit here. Ball one. Casilla almost hitting his first home run of the year last night, hitting it high off the wall in right center for a triple. Strike call. A man is 28 years old from the Dominican Republic. Signed by the Rockies back in 2001, came up with the Rockies in 2006. Up high, two and one. I think he and Masterson almost the same type of pitchers. You know, they'll hit that little spot where, boy, they're just hitting their spots, and then all of a sudden that release point just kind of leaves them. Dribbler up the line, but it'll kick foul. You know, it is an interesting comparison. Their delivery is both a little unorthodox. Jimenez drops the ball behind his back as Masterson does. Mm -hmm. The ball is visible almost the entire time through the delivery. A lot of hitter, a lot of pitchers will try to hide the baseball until the point of release, but Jimenez just wings it up there. And he's had a tough time on the road this year. This is his 12th road start. He has an ERA on the road at 6.63. Four wins, six losses on the road for the Indians. Pull a shake off. Now a 2 2 to Casilla. Popped up. My goodness. Jimenez has gotten himself, it looks like, out of two early inning jams. Cabrera with the catch. The Twins get a single and a walk to start the inning, but we're still scoreless after two.
two. You can vote for the Arby's value player of the game. Who will it be? Revere with a couple of stolen bases leading the balloting now. Text the word value followed by a space on the player's name to short code 234234. Well, so far, so good for Brian Dunsing. He has thrown 20, 20 pitches, 12 for strikes. Just gave up the Innsfield base hit to Shelley Duncan last inning. In his last start, relieving Liriano in Chicago, Brian Dunsing worked four shutout innings. He threw 43 pitches, 34 strikes. Casey Kotchman leading off the third for Cleveland. He'll be followed by Lillibridge and Chu. Down and away, ball one. Kotchman recovering from a terrible start, hit just 149 in April. Down to left center field, Casilla retreating, makes a nice running and then diving catch. Over the shoulder, looking right up into the sun, and he makes the catch. We have seen Casilla in this series make a couple of great plays, not only driving in some runs with his bat, but defensively makes a nice catch right there. That first reaction going back, picking up the ball, and then his momentum making him dive, making a great catch, great concentration, open glove. I think that's a great instructional for Tim Laudner later in this ball game right there. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah, I think lots can do that. Here's Brent Lillibridge. To right field. Revere has to come in now and a quick second up. I'm trying to picture Tim Wagner. Oh, he could do it. Not so, so much him, but could you make this catch with a catcher's man? I, I think he could do it with any glove right there. Really? That's Timmy right there at his best, right there when uh, Casilla drove, drove like that. You know what made that play is, I mean, right as soon as that ball was hit softly, Behind him, he took off and started running, and then pick up the ball and made a great defensive catch. Boy, pitchers, you love that. You tip your hat out on that mound. Thank you very much. Two down on the third. Here's Chu. Breaking ball over for a strike. In a sense, the Indians would be the perfect team for Dunsing to start against because they are so left-handed, and throughout his career, starter reliever. He's been much more effective against left handed batters than righties. Uh, and his career against Cleveland, four and one with an ERA at three in 13 ball games and five of those starts. See how Dunsing is, uh, Indians have done against left handed pitching, but Brian Dunsing has had very good success against him. Sliced foul. And, and the Indians are as right handed as they can get here today. They've left Anahan, Damon, Hafner and Kipnis on the bench. And you look and, and who are the people that uh, you're concerned with? Of course, the switch hitters Cabrera and Santana. But uh, this guy, Shinsu Chu, has been their best hitter all year long, and he's a lefty. Yeah, but he's hitting only 183 coming into this ball game against lefties and 348 against right-handed hitters or pitchers. Excuse me. And Dunsing puts him away. He's completed three innings with just one hit allowed and impressively 26 pitches thrown.
Fox Sports North is brought to you by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine for the everyday competitor in all of us. By CenturyLink, a different kind of communications company. CenturyLink, your link to what's next. And by Grand Casino, the best stories start here. Brian Dunsing with a very strong first three innings against the Indians. A scoreless game with Denard Span leading off the third against Ubaldo Jimenez. Another comparison between Jimenez and Masterson. They both have been terribly inconsistent. Just when Matty Acta thinks, all right, this guy's locked in for five, six starts, he's come up with a clinker. Well, oh, there is concern in Cleveland. The whole staff, Derek, uh, Derek Lowe has really struggled as of late too. So they're trying to stay in this race, and you know you expect your horses like Jimenez, Jimenez, and and Masterson and Lowe to get you get your wins, and they just have been uh, been not doing their job. Two and zero to Span started the game with a single for the Twins. A little pop fly to short center, and Brantley puts it away. One down. Bring up Ben Revere. You can ask a question online at carsoup.com forward slash baseball. Diane Palmer of Duluth wondering how distracting it is for a team when there are a lot of rumors about the tr uh, around the uh, trade deadline. Well, it happens to every team this time of the year. Going to bring in Tim Laudner on this too, but as a player, you still play the game. There's not much you can do about whether you're going to be part of a trade or not, right, Tim? That's certainly out of your control. It's always on the minds of the players. They think about it. They even talk about it at times. But when the game starts, you got to play the game. Don't worry about the things that are not in your control. You have to play the game. Wow. A quick throw by Jimenez. Somehow he got it to Kochman without hitting Revere. And a pretty good bunt ends up in out number two. About the only way you're going to get to Speedy Revere is that pitcher has to bounce off the mound like Jimenez did right here. Watch this right here. He just attacks the ball and in one motion picking it up, barehanding it, and then flipping it over. Now throw a little bit on the infield. Oh, you see right there, but Kochman able to. Wow. It's always a dangerous play when that first baseman has to reach into that speedy runner and the contact is made. And a nice defensive play by the pitcher. Two down, and here's Maurer with the bases empty. Twins had a threat in the first. Revere at third, one out thanks to a couple of stolen bases. And Jimenez struck out Maurer on a pitch, looked like it was up and out of the strike zone. And the Twins started the second inning with a single and a walk, but Jimenez got the next three batters. One and one. Jimenez reminds me a little bit of Rick Sutcliffe when he takes that ball behind his back in the windup, that Dodger type of theory. Don Sutton did the same thing. The, the curl around almost wraps that ball behind him and then releases the ball. Dodger organization seemed to teach that. I remember talking to Don Sutton and Rick Sutcliffe was a roommate of mine and teammate of mine in Cleveland, where he they would bring that ball down and almost turn that wrist around and then create that that long arm pretty much after you release that ball. Right there. That's why I was asking you before, even from up here, you see the ball a lot during his delivery rather than him hiding it behind his body, his glove, his leg. Well, watch where he drops that right arm with the ball in his hand. He gets to that balance point, and then most pitchers are taught to say bring it up a little bit, but he brings it straight down and behind him. We'll try to finish that here in a minute. It's it's once. He let gets that ball behind him. It almost goes all the way behind his back. Take a look at the finish right there. You see him drop the hand and then the little curl right there. That must have been his splitter right there. You can see the yep. split finger grip. Mm -hmm. Two and two, an hour. You can do that as long as you stay back. If you rush, then you're going to lose that release point. And he strikes out Mauer for the second time. And Jimenez has his first one, two, three inning.
from our GoPro shot. Well, I guess there are some clouds to be found, but uh, my goodness, beautiful blue sky, beautiful green grass, beautiful brown dirt. Nobody mentions the dirt. You never notice that. I mean, we got. You're talking about a baseball field. Everybody mentions the grass. Nobody talks about the beautiful dirt. Remember at the old Met, it was that real clay dirt. Yeah. Boy, you could do some sliding and get your uniform dirty. Mm. Liner to left and a base hit for Cabrera. A leadoff hit here in the fourth. And Santana will hit. Join Fox Sports North. As it supports cancer awareness, join Marty Gellner, Lisa Dunsing, and Alicia Perkins for the Light the Night Walk at Target Field Sunday, September 23rd, benefiting the Leukemia Lymphoma Society. Visit FoxSportsNorth.com. Click on Supports under the More tab to sign up for or donate to Fox Sports North team. Santana with a bouncer to short his first time up. Dunsing, I'd like to have one of those right here. Fly ball, right center field. Revere over a few steps. One down. And that'll bring up Jose Lopez. Hey, I'd like to say happy 75th birthday to Jack O'Keefe from Mora, Minnesota. Longtime uh, Twins fan. Happy 75th to you, young man. And I'd like to say congratulations to Lou Ford. Yes. The former twin who went to Japan, fought his way through. Independent League Baseball, the minor leagues. He got called up by the Orioles yesterday, and he's in the lineup today. Yeah, good for Lou. Uh, you know, you, you root for guys like that. Of course, Lou wore a twin uniform. I fought back. He went to a lot of different places to continue his career, and now he's back at the major league level. The Orioles eight and a half games back, but they are tied for second in the American League East. Popped up and Valencia looking up at the sky looking for room makes the catch on the warning track out number two. Yeah, high breaking ball right there. Lopez got underneath and popped it straight up. You see Danny with the shades down fighting that sun. Hey since we've talked about the Liriano trade and the trade deadline and all that you were traded a number of times but. Uh, were you a trade deadline guy when you came here from Cleveland? That was earlier in the year, wasn't it? When you came back in '85. No, that was I think like the first part of August, I believe. All right, well, I'll look, look and see. But but you didn't go through the anxiety uh, at the end of July like uh, a lot of players. Well, uh, I went through it more with Cleveland, and I knew that. Uh, Bill Bavay, excuse me, Peter Bavese, the general manager of the Indians, had told me he was going to trade me. It was just a matter of where I was going to go. I thought I was going to actually go to Anaheim and with the Angels, but I ended up coming back here to Minnesota. One strike to Brantley and a throw to first. Well, let's see here. Happened in 1985. Yeah. Bert Blylevin was traded on August 1st. Of 1985. For Jay Bell, Kurt Wardle, Jim Weaver, Richard Yet. There's nobody involved in the front office now who was around back then. I'm just curious that it was August 1st, whether the deadline was different back then. Why August 1st, which under current rules, would be after the uh, non waiver trade deadline. Mm -hmm. I may have went through waivers at that time and uh, Indian or excuse me Minnesota might have been below. Uh, the, say the Angels another club that uh, was interested in me at that time. What I understand. So far so good for Brian Dunsing. 35 pitches, 25 strikes in three and two thirds innings. No walks, one strikeout. He's given up only two hits. Two strikes to Brantley. Might be able to complete four innings here and under the under the under 40 pitches thrown. Couple throwovers to Cabrera at first. He has only two stolen bases in five attempts. Bert, there were a lot of Twins players at that time on August 10, 85 that were disappointed 
There's a lot of hits that went uh, <laughs> that went out of their uh, stats that came over to the park with you. I, I know Ken Herbeck was he still upset. Said, Herbie still talks about yeah. that, doesn't he? Yeah, when I retired in 92, you had noticed Herbie retired right after that. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the uh, vote of confidence, Tim Laudner. I'm not saying I was one of them, but there were a lot of guys in the lineup there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Two strikes. And a base hit to right. Cabrera is going to round second and gain third base. And Revere fires it into Casilla. So the Indians putting together now a two out threat with a pair of singles in the fall. Well, one thing about Brantley, he's one of the Indian hitters that has had pretty good success against left handed pitching this year. Now that pitch left up. Could see it on the Fox track where the location was. But he came into this ball game against left handed pitchers hitting 295. So he gets the third hit for the Indians, the second this inning. Shelly Duncan got an infield hit his first time up, hit a ground ball into the hole. Dozier cut it off, but he threw on two hops to Morno, and Duncan got a hit. It was the first. Cleveland hit of the day. A breaking ball missing two and oh. Uh, Shelly Duncan in his third season with the Indians came up with the Yankees in 2007. Not a high average hitter, but that potential power that he brings to the plate. Three and oh with Lou Marson on deck. The catcher hoping for a chance here in the fourth inning in a scoreless game. Three and oh to Duncan. Strike the covers the inside corner. Shelly Duncan, the son of Dave Duncan. Tony LaRusso's pitching coach forever. Chicago, Oakland, and St. Louis. Mm -hmm. Big swing. And a changeup. And a foul tip, three and two. Took something off that right there. Great location down in the strike zone. Brought to you by Window Concepts of Minnesota. Well, Jimenez has done a nice job wriggling out of a couple of situations in the first couple innings. Now Dunson trying to do it in the fourth. Got a long way foul. Strand a couple of runners. And a looping liner and a base hit right off the end of his bat. And the Indians get a pair of two out hits to get the game's first. Yeah, Duncan run. picking up his second hit, picking up his 25th RBI of the year. All right, let's go. Those long arms right there of Duncan at 6 5, just kind of reaching out and hitting it softly over the head of Dozier into left field. Cabrera scores the first run of the ball game. Now Marson who bounced to short his first time up. Cabrera started the inning with a single looked like he was going to be left there but then Brantley single Duncan single. And as they did last night the Indians get the first run of the game. Side corner of strike. <laughs> Miss. 
facing inside. Forty five pitches thrown for Dunsing. Been one pitch away from getting out of the fourth inning for about nine, ten pitches. Two and one. And this is where you can see a, you know a reliever kind of tiring maybe a little bit right here, leaving some pitches up, falling behind. Hasn't walked anybody, just four singles. Nothing of any significance, nothing hit particularly hard throughout the afternoon against Dunsing. Yeah, Dunsing making his 55th major league start. He has 21 wins, 20 losses as a starter. Three and one with Kotchman on deck. Well, Dunsing fell behind Duncan. Three and zero oh, ended up getting the count full before Duncan hit one off the end of the bat for an RBI single. Yeah, 20 pitches so far this inning for Brian Dunsing. Three and one to Cleveland's catcher. Bouncer to short. Johnson or a Dozier rather digs it out, runs to the bank. That's the end of the inning. Three singles in the game's first run for Cleveland. His second at bat, he'll try to do the same, but uh, he's turned a lot of games around with his at bats this year. Yeah, 27 home runs on the year for the Twins, 17 hit here at Target Field, and a very good batting average at 313. 46 of his 78 RBIs. Jim Tomey with 24 home runs here. Most of those, of course, uh, as a member of the Twins, Willingham has. Uh, Surprise Batista's not on that list. <laughs> Just hadn't played here enough. <laughs> well, Willingham will lead off the fourth in last night's game. It was 1 nothing Cleveland. There was a man aboard, and Willingham hit a two run home run, and the Twins never looked back. Up high, ball one. Middle of the Twins lineup Willingham, Morno, and Doman. Scalded it just foul about a foot wide of the line. And Willingham with a screaming line drive at the feet of Bill Welke. Yeah, Bill Welke had to get out of the way. He's trying to keep an eye on this ball.
Umpires straddle that line and ball just hooking foul. Welke saying get out of the wool. Almost hit him in the shin. Two and one. Josh Willingham should have been uh, busy during the All Star break in Kansas City. He was not, but he still had a good month of July. Right, sure has. And Jason Kubel having a very good month for the Diamondbacks. Three and one. Menez pitching with a lead for the first time. And Willingham draws a walk. And Morno will come to the plate. Second walk by Jimenez in the ball game. You know, Jimenez had that great first half two years ago, but you look at what happened to him in one year from the All Star break of 2010 to the All Star break or the trading deadline, a little more than a year, I guess, of 2011 when he was traded. He was 14 and 1 in the first half. For the Rockies in 2010, and then just over a year later, they traded it. High fly to deep right center field. This ball is up. It is back and gone. A home run. Well, almost shades of what happened here on Friday night. A walk to Mauer. Willingham hit a two run home run. This time, Willingham draws the walk, and Justin Morneau hits a home run. His second home run in this series, his 13th of the year on a high pitch. That ball lands in the flower bed. Oh, I think it bounces out. Domit takes up and away. Might have hit the railing up there. There's no come in to, back into play. There's no way to definitively say, but that's the type of ball they're saying. This we're talking about the field staff, uniform people for both teams. The type of ball they're saying has traveled out this year that didn't in the first two years of the ballpark. That's a long poke out there, right center field. You got the tall wall, and Morno's been frustrated by that wall more than any other hitter. Dolman skies one a mile in the air. And out of play. Yeah, that home run measured at 382 feet for Justin Morneau. That one in the fly ball home run that Tony hit into the flower bed. You know, Ron Garden hired Joe Vavra, all of the people who were down in the dugouts, they're saying that the ball is traveling. Just get into the flower bed and back yeah. out. The ball's traveling just a little bit farther than it did in the first two years, and that might have been a ball that uh, last year or the year before might not have gone out. Anybody's theory as to why is accepted at this point. I kind of like your theory. I think the cement is just. No, no, it's Jason Giambi's. I don't want to take okay. any ownership of that thing. Two and two to Doman. And he pops it the other way, and there's nobody who could catch it if it was on the field of play. Well, Morno will take it again. He's been denied by that tall wall in right center so often, and he is able to clear it for maybe a turnaround home run of his own here. Good. That way the Twins don't have to move the fences in. <laughs> don't it strikes out. Evan is picking up his fourth strikeout. You said that with kind of a sneer in your voice. at and trivia. Who are the two? Pitchers to have 15 wins at the All Star break since 2000. Well, we kind of talked around it a little bit. So we'll go with Jimenez as number one. I want Pedro Martinez, the other. Ball one. Since then, since his great first half two years ago, Jimenez is 23 and 29 with an ERA of just under five. Roy Halliday. Yeah. A couple years ago, Jimenez ended up third in the Cy Young of award voting behind Roy Halliday, who won the award for the Phillies. 
Valencia with a liner caught by Littlebridge out number two. But in that year, 14 of his wins came before July 1st. And then uh, my Minnesota high school math would tell me only five wins came in the final three months of the year. They won 13 ball games last year between the Indians and the Rockies. And Dozier spanks a single up the middle with two out. And that'll bring Casilla to the plate. And the Indians were in the race a year ago and they pulled the trigger on this uh, big uh, trade involving a couple of hot pitching prospects. They got him in as this year. They're hoping that uh, someone by the name of Roberto Hernandez might help them in the final two months of the year. Used to know him as Fausto Carmona. I don't think they can activate him uh, until what August 11th. Yeah, another couple of weeks. Yeah. He's down in the minor leagues uh, doing some rehabbing. Getting his arm strong. And there goes Dozier. Marson's throw right on the money. Safe at second base. Dozier got his hand inside the tag. And Cabrera barks at Jeff Nelson. And Nelson barks back. There's some barking going on out there. Jeff Nelson watching it closely. Good strong throw by Marson. Dozier with a head first slide. And the tag right around the shoulder area. Oh, looks like got him on the shoulder, huh? Marson can't believe it. So stolen base for Brian Dozier, his seventh of the year in nine attempts. Third stolen base for the Twins in the game. Casilla over to Kochman, and this time Jimenez covers the bag, and that ends the inning. Justin Morno's 13th home run of the year with a man aboard, putting the Twins in front two to one. Sanford Health Injury Report involving Neftali Feliz and the Rangers. When we played them right before the All Star break, the Rangers were unclear as to whether they would bring him back as a starter or reliever. And now they're wondering whether they'll be able to bring him back at all. They're still having some uh, elbow problems. So it stands to reason the Rangers, with about 48 hours left in the trade deadline before the trade deadline, that the Rangers might be pursuing a starting pitcher. They've got a three and a half game lead over the unbelievable, unbelievably surging Oakland A's. Getting shut out today, five to nothing by Baltimore. 
Well, Dunsing right now at 50 pitches, doing a good job throwing strikes. Too many pitches in the fourth inning. 21 pitches on the three hits and the run that the Indians were able to put on the board, but now goes back out there for the fifth with a one one run lead. Thanks to Justin Morneau. One hopper to Dozier. Cotchman retired one away. If you act today, you can get a steal of a deal when the Twins host Tampa Bay in August 8th. For a limited time, you can get home plate view tickets for just $26. The deal against the Rays is only available for a limited time, and you can get it by logging on to twinsbaseball.com or by calling 833 Twins. That's for the game on August 10th, by the way. If I said the 8th, I was wrong. August 10th. And while you're at it, check out all the great ticket offers for upcoming games at Target Field. Brent Lillibridge, the batter, 1 0. Popped up, short left center. Dozier out, span in. He makes the catch out number two. You saw Dozier going out right there, and you go out until you hear that outfielder call you off and Denard span. Let Dozier know in plenty of time, get out of the way. I will catch this one. So Dunsing has done everything he can here today to lay claim for a spot on the Twins rotation, which one way or the other is going to look different in the final two months of the year with the trade of Francisco Liriano. Bounce toward Dozier, backhanded. And a nice play over to Morno. And Dunsing uh, has handled his two to one lead very well here in the fifth. Circle with $100 worth of scratch off tickets courtesy of the Minnesota State Lottery to D celebrating her 80th birthday. D is from Emily, Minnesota. You have your family here with you, and I understand you had some special visitors before this game today. I did. I had Bert and, Bl uh, Bert and Dick came over and said hi to me and happy birthday. Kind of knocked me off my feet when my husband told me to turn around, and there they were standing. I was, it was quite an enjoyable surprise. And Bert didn't push you over to knock you off your feet. You just mean you were he so surprised. Gave me a big hug and a kiss. Yeah, he was. He gave you a kiss? Yeah, he, they both did. Yep. Well, Dick and Bert, I know you've already met this lovely lady, but Dee celebrating an 80th birthday with her family here today. They're having a great time. Yes, happy birthday again, Dee. It was our pleasure to stop by. Mm -hmm. Denard Span leading off. And a pop fly foul, two strikes.
Span with a single in the first inning, a fly ball to center in the third. Revere and Maurer to follow with Ubaldo Jimenez giving up a two run home run to Morno. Pass along uh, best wishes to Glenn Perkins' grandmother, Betty Orn, who's rehabbing from a broken leg. So we'll uh, wish Betty the very best. Yes. Get well soon, Betty. One and two to span. And again, Jimenez trying to flip that inside corner, but he missed again. Two and two. Well, Jimenez with a couple walks in a ball game, four strikeouts. Trying to work inside. You see Marson sitting inside, just missing inside. Pulled foul. Watch out. The fact that the Indians, you know, shot a lot of bullets last year at this time to get Jimenez in terms of prospects might be one of the things that will keep them from pulling off a trade this year. Two and two. The Indians, like every other team, yeah. looking for pitching help. One well, name you I, I don't think the Indians are looking much for starters as much as they are looking for maybe that right-handed power bat. You know, the starting staff, even though it struggled as of late, you have five starters that have done a pretty good job. Span goes down on strikes, and Jimenez picks up his fifth strikeout. TNT trivia two pitchers to have 15 wins at the All Star break. I said Pedro Martinez and Jimenez. David Wells with Toronto. Told Pedro Martinez did it in 1999. I could have been guessing till next year's trading deadline and not come up with David Wells. One strike to Revere. One and one. Revere reached in a fielder's choice in the first, stole a couple of bases. Tried to bunt his way aboard in the third, and Jimenez turned in a nice play to barely get him in the third inning. And Revere slaps a single to left center. That might be an extra base hit. He's digging for two, and he goes in sliding. Good at bat right there by Ben Revere. Hammond has left the ball up and Ben just slapped it the other way. And with his speed, he's thinking extra bases right off the get go. Yeah, ball kind of left up and good piece of hitting, just taking the ball the other way. Duncan has to get over there and get it back in. And a feet first slide by Ben Revere. He pops right back up. So a double for Revere, his tenth double of the year. Menez has struck out Maurer twice, both times swinging. Let's see what Maurer can get done the third time. Ball one. Of course, the Liriano trade will impact everybody left on the roster for the Twins. But maybe in a very direct way, Joe Maurer. Since Liriano was moved back into the rotation, his catcher was Drew Butera. And now that Liriano is gone, it stands to reason that Maurer will see more time behind the plate because Butera won't have. The uh, duty of catching every five days for Liriano. Well, Gardy still likes, uh, you know, giving Joe a day off now and then. The DH or Ryan Domit. And a Bach is called. Not sure what happened, whether Jimenez caught his spikes or what happened, but Marson will come out to try to settle him down here. 
by the box sending Revere to third. Yeah, it looked like he started his windup and then just stopped. Take a look right here. Ready to throw home. And took a little uh, jump right here toward <laughs> home play. Maybe a play was on, and I don't know because of Revere stealing third. He yeah. tried to hurry his yeah. throw. You know, Ben stole third in the uh, first inning. Well, that's what I thought. Maybe he's so concerned about Revere at second that he just kind of flinched a little bit. At any rate, Revere is at third, and the infield's in. And here in the fifth inning, it was not in in the first inning when. Mauer ended up striking out. Well, first Bach of the year for uh, Jimenez. And a breaking ball, and Joe Thorne swings through it. Coming into this game, Mauer won for five against Jimenez, but Jimenez had never struck him out. We've seen more swings and misses in the Mauer at bats today than usually see in a whole homestand. Two and two. Yeah, tried to sneak that fastball by him. Two and two. That kicks away, and Revere's going to come home. So Revere gets a double because of his speed might have created a bonk because of his speed and now a wild pitch leads to the third twins. Run. Yeah we saw Masterson last night he leads the American League in wild pitches with 11 and Jimenez just tied him right here. This is his 11th wild pitch as that ball short hops Marson and then rolls up that left arm and got behind him and Ben Revere makes it a three to one ball game. Full count to Maurer with Willingham on deck. Hit high and deep to center. Brantley going back. This ball carrying and it's caught on the track. Brantley with a great running catch right before he hit the wall. What great concentration, great catch right there by Michael Brantley going back. Knows that he's on that warning track. He's coming close to the wall. Picking up where he's at, reaches out, makes a nice catch. It's a two down, and that'll bring up Willingham. His leadoff walk in the fourth was completed one pitch before Morno hit a two run home run. Very high in the air. Marson fighting the sun, and it's out of play. That's almost that ball that we saw Joe was a couple of years ago reach around the screen yeah. and make that great catch. Mauer's done that twice here and at Comerica Park. Ron Gardenhier saying this morning that Willingham has fit in well here because he's a pull hitter. Michael Kadire, who in essence Willingham was replacing on the roster and on the payroll, two strikes to Willingham. Kadire more of a gap to gap hitter, and Willingham will hit some home runs to center and to left center and to left, but I think he has just one home run hit to right center field. Swing and a miss, and Jimenez. Completes the fifth inning. The Twins get a run on a double balk and wild pitch.
to Target Field against the Chicago White Sox. There could be a storm in the area early, otherwise a dry evening with warm temperatures with a light westerly wind. Perfect today, 77, humid, but who cares? Just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And the Twins in front, three to one. Here's Cabrera fouling the first pitch away. Dunsing's done great here today, giving up just four singles. Hasn't walked anybody. I think what we've seen the Indians do swing at that first pitch off of Dunsing a lot here this afternoon. Only 55 pitches for Dunsing, trying to get the first out here in the sixth inning. Popped up, fouling out of play. And Anaheim against the Rays. Zach Grinke ready to make his Angels debut. We'll take the mound uh, in just a little while after being traded from the Brewers. By the way, Mike Trout has been scratched by the Angels. He's got a knee bruise after colliding with the wall last night. Swing and a miss. Cabrera is gone on strike. And Dunsing picking up his second strikeout. Dunsing struck out two to end the third inning. And on three pitches, strikes out Cabrera. One down, and here's Carlos Santana. On the outside well, it's corner. been a great start for Brian Dunsing. His other four starts, the longest he went was four and a third innings in a start in Detroit. Here he is with one out in the sixth inning. Seems like for a long time now the Indians have been uh, vulnerable to left handed pitching. Remember back in 2005, the Twins were taking on the Indians and they called up a left-hander, Dave Gassner, who uh, won one game for the Twins that year as a left-hander, and he beat the Indians in Cleveland. And had some shoulder problems, wasn't able to get back with the club. But uh, teams have, for a long time now, like to stack up left-handed pitchers against this primarily left-handed lineup. And the dirt, two and two. Twin so Scott Diamond go the distance and pitching a shutout here on Friday. And Liriano Liriano lined up to start today, traded him last night. Probably very little question who the twins were going to pull out of the bullpen on short notice. They wanted a left hander, and Dunsing has uh, pitched very well here today. Still two and two. Again, Jeff Manship will be called up in time to help out the bullpen tomorrow. Pounded foul. Santana with a bouncer to short, fly ball to right, and now a sore left foot. Remember last night's ball game, he hit one off the shin, and he has that pad this afternoon. Two and two. Dunson got a piece of it. And Casilla cleans up for out number two. Two down. Another nice play by Casilla as that ball was hit up the middle. Dunsing may have slowed it down a little bit. Take a look right here. But Casilla, nice running play. Two down, and here is Jose Lopez. The Indians search for right handed pop. 
led them to picking up Lopez. He was designated for assignment earlier this year. And because of some injury situations, the Indians kept him and hit him cleanup for a good part of the month of May and into June. One and one. Not the power guy they're looking for. Lopez, no. you know, he came up with the Seattle Mariners back in 2004. He has 92 career home runs since 2004. Of course, the guy they hoped would fill that spot, Matt Laporta, just hasn't figured it out at, at the big league level. Probably a lot like. Uh, Oh, remember Michael Restovich, mm -hmm. and I don't think Chris Parmley is going to fit that mold. But they really didn't have much to prove anymore at AAA. But Laporta hasn't been able to bring success up here. Here's a liner over the reach of Dozier toward the gap. Willingham spins and fires, and Lopez has a two-out single. If you're hitting the road, take the Twins with you. Subscribe to MLB.tv and see every. Twins out of market game live online and on your favorite devices in HD quality. Visit twinsbaseball.com to order, get more details. MLB.tv, baseball everywhere. Home territory blackout restrictions apply. Got a ball left up right there, and Lopez pretty much Tommy hawked that ball over the leaping Dozier. Dozier almost caught that ball. Here's Michael Brantley, one for two. And first pitch strike. Yeah, I said at the uh, top of the show, if they get four or five good innings out of Brian Dunsing, I, I think they would be very happy. But he's one out away from completing six innings. This will be his 70th pitch of the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And a little dribbler, Doman wants it. Takes care of it. Ends the inning. Six awfully good innings for Brian Dunsing on short notice. He's got a three to one lead. Our Coors Light freeze cam and a nice play by Alexi Casillas. Yeah, you know what? Uh, Tim Laudner was just up here. We are not doing that in the instruction. Oh, that's, that, that's not right. Yeah, Timmy said he didn't want to get his pants dirty. Since but a great play by Alexi Casillas. Since it's the Coors Light sixth thing, we thought we'd bring you the Frost Brood Coors Light freeze cam. Three to one twins. Bottom of the sixth and Justin Morneau who has a sharp single and a two run home run. Now he drives it to left. Duncan going back. Three very well hit balls, and we've seen that more in the last week or so than we've seen at any point this year. Morno in multiple at bats, really hitting the ball hard. Well, you see between innings right there, Dunsing, uh, six outstanding innings. Good handshakes from Gardy and Rick Anderson, the pitching coach. 
Only 70 pitches, 49 first strikes as Alex Burnett starts to loosen up. Brian Domit. A walk and a strikeout, and he takes strike one. Strike two. Saw Dolman last night with his shift. Get a pitch in the outer half of the plate, drive it hard to left field. Tigers beat the Blue Jays four to one. Just off the inside corner. Two and two. Breaking ball tapped to the right side. It's the shortstop Cabrera who bobbles it, still throws him out. Uh, number two. Time now for the Century Link high speed pitch. Well, Brian Dunsing, six outstanding innings. Eminem still out there at 96 miles an hour, his fastest, and Dunsing at 93. Danny Valencia. Struck out his first time up and hit a line drive to the second baseman Lillibridge his next time up. Breaking pitch left up 2 0. Oh. Back. Well, both starters really doing a pretty good job. You know, the Bach in a wild pitch created another run last inning for the Twins, but Dunsing have just outpitched him so far in this ballgame. Dunsing done. I mean, they're still there. Kotschman stays with another soft line drive, and Jimenez has a 1 2 3 6 inning. Complete a sweep. Yeah, Indians took a one nothing lead, but Justin Morneau with the home run, a two run home run, made it a two to one ball game. 
And then in the fifth inning, Ben Revere with one out, he hit a double. And then he was boxed over to third. And then Jimenez threw a wild pitch and scored the third run for the Twins. So the speed of Ben Revere added a run. And the pitcher on the mound for the Twins. It'll be Alex Burnett taking over for Brian Dunsing. Here, if it's high def you're watching or low def, that's a beautiful sight. Beautiful ballpark. Three to one Twins lead. And Alex Burnett comes in to pitch to Shelly Duncan, Lou Marson, and Casey Kochman. And a first pitch strike. Alex Burnett last worked on Monday in Chicago, making his 43rd relief appearance. So the day off the complete game and then the good start last night. Some of the main starters or relievers out in that bullpen getting some extra time off. Well earned. Samuel Duduno did a good job winning his second major league game last night. Two strikes. And a fly to center sending Span back near the warning track for the first out. So Burnett with ample time to be brought into the ball game, ample time to warm up. Gets the first out here in the seventh. That brings up Marson. Hey, he's had a very solid year. 40 now eight innings pitch, only 40 hits allowed. The walks a little high 18 but two intentional walks with 20 strikeouts. Marson a couple of ground balls to Dozier so far. And ball one. And one. If the Twins hang on and win, it'll be a six and a half games behind the Indians. More than two months to play. Chopper left side, Valencia scoops, fires, good play. Out number two. And before Kochman comes to the plate, you can get a behind the scenes tour. At Target Field, visit twinsbaseball.com, call 833 Twins. Check out all the different types of tours that are available in the daily schedule. Private tours are available as well. So again, go to twinsbaseball.com or 833 Twins and get the details and book your tour here at the ballpark. Two gown in the seventh inning and Kochman at the plate. Outside, ball one. Two and one. Touchman had a really good year last year with the Rays. Remember last year the Rays let Carlos Pena go to the Cubs as a free agent. They've since brought him back. But Touchman hit. 306 for the Rays last year. They had 10 home runs, drove in 48. This one lifted to left, right at Willingham. Burnett out of the pen has a 1 2 3 seventh inning.
was overnight Francisco Liriano traded by the Twins to the White Sox for a pitching prospect and a middle infield prospect. We all spent a lot of time watching Liriano pitch. No one spent more time working with him than Rick Anderson. We love Frankie. I mean, he works hard. He, he no problems, and, and uh, the way he goes about his his, his trade, and uh, we love him. And uh, you know, and, and uh, you wish him the best. But uh, as a person, as a friend, as a teammate, yeah, we're going to miss him a lot. Yeah, we sure do. I think uh, you know what I remember about Liriano is yeah, he's he has three major league pitches and. He didn't have, you know, the best of year. He started the season. He struggled. He was then sent out to the bullpen. Came back and had ten very good starts. The last couple have not been, you know, Liriano what he wanted to do. But I remember we go to the, we come to the ballpark early. I'd always see Liriano whether it be here or on the road running the stairs. He really kept himself in great shape and and physically, you know. He's a young man that, that's going to bring some positive vibes, I think, to Chicago. Uh, he's loved by his teammates here in Minnesota. A lot of them, I know, tweeted saying that, uh, you know, they hated to see him go. He's a good friend, but uh, it's a game of baseball. And I think on a personal level, you'd agree he's just a good guy. Yep. He's a wonderful guy. And enjoyed my association with him. It seems strange uh, to think of him in a White Sox uniform. Another great guy, Jesse Crane, pitching for the one. Liriano. AJ Brzezinski, former twin. No, we said nice guys. I like AJ. <laughs> Outside ball one. Bottom He's of the a seven. gamer, man. He wants to win. Nothing wrong with that. No. Dozier could see in span. He's in Jimenez here in the seventh. And Dozier with another sharp single. And we're seeing more and more of that too. Dozier having better at bats and stinging the ball, something he did not do much of for about a month. Well, you know what? And he didn't take it down on defense, and that's the biggest thing of Ron Gardenhire is a stickler on. You know, you're going to struggle at the plate from time to time, but don't take it out defensively. We've seen Dozier make some great plays in the series, and another good at bat, getting a second straight hit. Let's see if Casilla is asked to bunt here. He was asked to bunt. Friday night did not uh, succeed. Was leading by a pair. Might want to get Dozier up into scoring position here. Dozier tried to steal and succeeded. There's a bunt and it'll roll foul. Somebody better pounce on it before it rolls back. Well, you saw Lopez, you know, playing in on the grass, looking for the bunt, and Casilla just tried to take the ball with them right there. Put the ball foul. As Cal Pochman, the first baseman, has to hold on to runner Dozier at first. I don't know if Casilla got the sign to bunt, but if he was given the sign to bunt, that was for a sacrifice, and he looked like he was trying to bunt for a base hit. Yeah, I mean, he's capable of doing that. If that ball stays fair, it's probably an infield hit, though, and he does his job. Has in on the grass at third. Hotchman, of course, has to hold the runner at first. And Jimenez holding the ball right there, seeing maybe if Casilla shows early, he may square around the butt, but he did not. Squares and misses two strikes. They kind of jabbed at that one as he did uh, the other night. Kind of jabbed at the ball, created a little pop up. Sometimes bunters, I mean, like Casilla, they're better off doing exactly what he tried to do in that first at bat than trying to square around as he does right here. Watch him square and then kind of jabbed at the ball. Ball oh, looked like it was almost in the dirt. Mm -hmm. Two strikes. And with two strikes, he drops down a sacrifice. So nicely done. Casilla advances Dozier uh, with a two strike punt. Very nice job right there by Casilla. Sacrifice punt, moving Dozier to second base with one out. Now span. Ball up a little bit more. The, the previous pitch was down a little bit too much. and. All you want to do is just put it in play with two strikes on. He is able to do that. 
Scott Rudinsky is going to come to the mound here. And the Indians getting a so so start from Jimenez here today. He was given a 1 0 lead and it didn't last two batters into the fourth inning with the home run by Morno. Run in the fifth, looks threatening again here in the seventh. Yeah, he hasn't made too many mistakes. He let that pitch up to Justin that Justin uh, hit out of the ballpark, and then uh, to pitch to Ben Revere with one out, he left that pitch up and Ben hit the double to left center. 98 pitches for Jimenez. Indians feel that if they can get Jimenez stabilized, Masterson stabilized, if Roberto Hernandez can come back and Pitch like he's capable of that they can hang in this race. Yeah, Derek Lowe, another one, if yeah. we can get that sinker going again. Looks lucky they're not facing Lowe. He's pitched maybe his two best games this year against the Twins. Span with a chance to increase the Twins' lead here. Ball one. Yeah, Indians have another youngster, Zach uh, McAllister, that has pitched very well. He's been their best starter, game in and game out. Speaking of Hernandez, who had the false identity charges. Against him in the Dominican Republic. He just recently was cleared to come to the United States about a week ago, showed up in Cleveland, offered his apologies to the Cleveland fans and the Cleveland players, and uh, attempted levity. The players presented him with three birthday cakes for the three years of his birthday that they weren't around for <laughs> 29, 30, and 31. So everybody had some dessert, and then they. Uh, Welcomed him back into the clubhouse. Two and one. Wins trying to tack on another run here in the seventh against Jimenez. Up and away, three and one. Jimenez has only walked two batters here today. That's been an encouraging sign. Revere on deck. Full count. Drop the breaking ball right there in a fastball situation. Strikes brought to you by Carrier. And Span takes a walk. First and second. With one away. And before Revere comes to the plate, and Manny Acker brings in a new pitcher. If you can't wait for the start of the Gopher football season, Fox Sports North Tyler Mason has been previewing them position by position leading up to this week's start of fall practice. Catch up with the series at FoxSportsNorth.com. Menez leaves with a two run deficit, two men on base.
Mets uh, just a few outs away from a three game sweep. They've been getting great starting pitches. Well, we have not seen too many times in a three game series where the pitching has really been effective for the Twins. Well, good to see all three starters in this series doing an outstanding job. So, here's a bad punt. If the Twins uh, win all three games, they will have beaten the Indians in 3D. Diamond to Duno and Dunson. Yep. Well, whatever it takes. Very good numbers for all three starters in this three game series. Tony Ship coming in at a ball game, replacing Jimenez. Sip worked in last night's ball game one inning. He did give up a run on a couple hits, and one of those hits was Ben Revere in the eighth inning. He had a double off of him. Here is Revere. With two on and one out. The only left hander on the staff for Manny Acta, Tony Sip. Try to double steal successfully. Try to double steal here on Friday night against Josh Tomlin. And Revere takes a low ball one. You know, it's a tough play for a third baseman when you have a guy like Ben Revere up that can bunt and get on. And as a third baseman like Lopez, you're playing in on the grass, almost on the grass, but. You're always susceptible to that rudder at second, you know, sneaking in behind. And that's what happened the other night here. Ben Revere took off and stole third. There they go. Marson's throw. Not in time. It's the second double steal the Twins have pulled off against the Indians this weekend. Uh, what Sip does right here, he picks up, and as soon as he started his delivery, Dozier took off head first slide, steals his second base in this ball game, as Denard Span scoots to second base and gets a stolen base. So five stolen bases in this ball game for the Twins. Two and on out of Revere, infield in for Cleveland. Dug out by Marson. It's 3 0. Oh, Mauer on deck. Not only is Sip the only left hander on the staff, but he's had a very uneven season. He's pitched better as of late, but he had a very disappointing first half of the year. Rafael Perez has been hurt almost all year long. Yeah, Perez out with a strained left shoulder. 3 0. Oh. And a strike on the outside corner. So as I think we said on Friday, the Indians are a flawed team. And as long as the American League Central uh, is considered a flawed division, unless or until someone takes control of the division, they've been able to compete. Now it looks like the White Sox are uh, playing really good baseball. Have made the commitment by bringing in some players. And it's going to be a challenge, I suspect, for the Indians to stay in the hunt here. Well, with Detroit winning today, Chicago has a two game lead over the Tigers. Revere bounces it through the hole up the middle. Dozier will score. Span right behind him, and the Twins lead it 5 to 1. Well, with the infield in, of course, it cuts down the range of the infielders. And Ben Revere worked a count in his favor. Got a fastball and hit it right back up the middle. Little Bridge at second base. Tried to knock it down as he goes to his right. See the infield in. He cannot get there as the ball scoots through the infield. And the Twins add two more to take a 5 to 1 lead. The value of the double steal. It's uh, entirely possible that if. Revere hits that ground ball with runners at first and second instead of second and third. The infield's back could have been an inning ending double play. As it is, two more runs on the board. Only one out, and now ball one to Mauer. A 12 game hitting streak for Ben Revere, the longest in the American League. 
couple of hits again here today. The average had settled down to just over 300. Now it's working its way back north. The Twins have been very aggressive stealing bases in this series, so they had better keep an eye on Ben Revere. Well, I, I think what's important for Ben, yeah, the 12 game hitting streak, but he's picking up some RBIs too. That, that's important. Two last night, two here this afternoon. Driving in some runs with those hits. One and out of our. Zip has that high leg kick. See if he utilizes that slide step to try to maybe slow Revere down a little bit. They tried to hurry his delivery right there. A quick pitch. If you're not careful, it really can change your focus out there on the mound, can yeah. it? Having a speedy runner on. Yeah, you tell yourself not to worry about it. I know when Ricky Henderson is on there, if he to me, he wants to steal second, he's gonna do it. A guy like Ben Revere, you know, you just try to make sure you make good quality pitches home. Revere off with the pitch, he slides into second. And now Duncan met the catch. Revere retouches and goes back to first. Two down. And that'll bring up Willing. He went with a higher leg kick right there, and that's when Ben took off with the pitch up, and Maurer just popped it up. So Joe Maurer 0 for 4 in the ball game. Willingham 0 for 2, but with a very big walk, leading off the fourth inning, right in front of Morno's home run. Swing and a miss. Mention if the Twins win today, they'll be 19 and 19 against teams within the division. That'll be Cleveland's mark if they lose. Yeah, remember, 72 of the 162 ball games are played in your division. The Twins have a lot of games left in the Central Division. Throw overs that Sip has thrown to first base Kochman, they've all come with not really in his windup. He just kind of steps over there. He's yet really to throw when he brings that knee up. Like that. He'll go home. Check swing, but he went. Oh and two. I think as a pitcher here, you have to convince yourself that you know what Ben Revere steals right here. Your ultimate goal is to get this guy out of home plate. You worry so much about that base runner, you're going to leave a cookie up to this guy. It may be two runs put on the board very quickly. Two strikes to Willingham. So he just kind of brings that knee halfway up and throws over. It really hasn't brought that knee all the way up where he does in his chest area and throw to first. I think a really good chance that Revere would take off here with two strikes on Willingham. Revere stays put and it's down and away. Michael Kadire having a so so year with the Rockies. 15 home runs, 55 runs batted in. Yeah, that club is really struggling. Yeah. 37 and 62. 17 and a half games in last place in that Western Division. Off the end of the bat, the bouncer to short. Cabrera sets himself and fires. 
Willingham is done. The inning is over. The Twins get a two out or a two run single by Ben Revere. And now lead it five to one. Ninety-nine at McDonald's, and by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. Well, the offense continues to put runs on the board, and the Twins with a five-to-one lead. This copyrighted telecast presented by the authority of the Minnesota Twins and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Minnesota Twins LLC. You see, a little over a year ago, I was disappointed you didn't include that in your Hall of Fame induction. Speech. I should have. Jared Burton coming on to pitch to the Indians in the eighth inning. Now Burton has been outstanding in that bullpen. You see the very good 2.29 ERA for Burton. 39 and a third innings pitched for Jared Burton, and he's allowed 28 hits, 10 walks, 36 strikeouts. Brent Lillibridge leading off the eighth for the Indians. Pass ball up high, ball one. This rest that you've talked about, a complete game after an off day to start this series, to do no with a good start. No one would benefit more from that, you'd think, than Burton. The Twins are very aware of his uh, health history and how he's, you know, had shoulder problems, and they're very protective of all their players. But this guy has been so good. The last thing they want to do is burn him up. But Perkins perhaps will get the ninth. There's a strike two and one. Well, Burton has been outstanding. He has not given up a run in a, an outing since June 10th against the Cubs here at Target Field. We're covering 14 and two thirds innings. With a good fastball, a hard slider, then that circle change up. It's been a great pitch for him. Liner to center and a base hit. Lillibridge aboard, leading off the eighth with a hit. The Twins begin a three game series against Francisco Liriano and the Chicago White Sox. Tomorrow night at Target Field, it's a Schweiger Dollar a Dog Day. The first 20,000 hot dogs will be sold for a buck. Limit two for customer. Good seats available for the Twins White Sox series. Check out pricing at twinsbaseball.com. Call 833-TWINS. Yeah, you wonder if Liriano may, you know, they might push Chris Sale back. You mentioned earlier he might be starting that game, uh, you know, that third game of the three-game yeah. series. We haven't heard yet. It wouldn't surprise me. 
if uh, it wasn't Liriano starting for them tomorrow. The, you know, Liriano's supposed to go today. They don't want to do anything to disrupt his schedule too much either. I would think uh, there's a decent chance he might be uh, the starter for the White Sox tomorrow. One strike to Shinsu Chu. Bouncer right side. Casilla gets the lead runner. And Dozier can't pull the trigger on the throw to Morno. One down. So Liriano may make his. White Sox debut tomorrow. Zach Grinke is making his Angels debut today. Yeah, so far so good for Zach Grinke. Scoreless in the bottom of the third inning. There's a couple strikeouts in the ball game. Uh, that uh, American League West race and the wild card race to me are going to be fascinating just from the Angels perspective. As aggressive as they were in the offseason, they land Grinke, who was the top tradable pitcher. On the market here in July, they get him. Rolled to short. See if they can turn two here. Yep, easily. Cabrera rolls into a double play, and Burton faces just three men in the inning. You'll stay with us for our coverage following the game in Twins Live presented by CenturyLink. We'll look at another strong start for the Twins. Brian Dunsing delivers this one today. That's three strong starts for the Twins in this series against the Indians. Also reaction as always from Ron Gardenhire and our instructional will be playing catch on the field. It'll be Burt Blylevin and Tim Laudner. It's not that simple though as playing catch. We're going to have those guys show you a little bit more about the arts of playing catch. Things you can work on seems like just a simple fundamental playing catch with a baseball, but there's really a lot more to it. And, Bert, I look forward to hearing what that is in our instructional after the game. Yeah, me too, Marnie. Thank you very much. Listen, I, I I'm going to go play catch with Timmy. That's awesome. Morno drops a base hit into right field. His third hit of the ball game. Home run that gave the Twins a lead in the fourth inning. A good line pulled hard black. Yeah, after Josh Willingham led off the inning, the bottom of the fourth with a walk, Justin Morneau jumping on a high pitch and hitting a home run his 13th of the year. That gave the Twins a 2 to 1 lead. Now, Ryan Dolman will hit right handed, having gone 0 for 2 with a walk left hand. Yeah, Dolman hitting 256 as a right handed hitter. Three of his ten home runs coming from the right side of the plate. Strike one.
One strike. To the Twins catcher. And now a ball. This is a guy right here, Dick. I think it's under noticed a little bit. He did sign a two-year extension with the Twins, but Ryan Doman has done a really good job coming over here in his first season with the Twins. He's played so many different positions behind the plate, giving Joe Maurer a break from time to time. He and Drew Butera. Little fly ball to right field. Shinsu two coming in. One down. One eight. You know, one thing, and it's not just because the Twins are three outs away from completing the sweep, but just to look at this lineup, you know, for the most part, Bauer's been catching. He and Doman flip flop today. But Morno's been at first base all three games. Casillas played well at second base. Dozier's done well. It's Valencia at third for the injured Blue. The outfield has had a productive series. I mean, this is the lineup the Twins would. Like to have run out there. There were so many question marks at the start of the year. How much would Maurer be able to catch? How much would Morno be able to play first base? And as we move forward through August and September, I think the, the Twins want to do what they can to eliminate those questions for next year. Another fly ball to right. And Chu comes in for the catch. Out number two. Well, I think the biggest thing all season long, the Twins hitting as a ball club. Pretty good. They're sixth in the American League and hitting at 264 as a club. It's just that they found themselves behind the eight ball so many times because of the inconsistency of the starting staff. Here, what we've seen in this three game series, the Twins have a chance to win this three game series, sweep the Indians because the starting staff has been very, very solid all three ball games. Here's Dozier. He stung the ball. And it really, it's that simple. It really is good pitching. You need good starting pitching. And that uh, is going to be addressed uh, for the ballot maybe in the next 48 hours. The Twins will uh, take further steps to address that, certainly in the offseason. One strike to Dozier. And now a ball. But remember, in, in, uh, through the month of March, all offseason long, there were all the question marks on the position players. And it wouldn't surprise me if the Twins, uh, with uh, Liriano gone, gone now, will ask Maurer to shoulder more games behind the plate and put Morno more no more at first base, just so they don't have those questions to deal with again next year. One and two. Popped up. Marson with the catch. And we head to the ninth inning. The Twins up five to one. Glenn Perkins is going to try to finish off a three game sweep.
been a good weekend for the Twins. Ben Revere and company hoping to complete a sweep. 5 1 lead as we go to the ninth inning. Not a save situation, but a chance for Glenn Perkins to pitch an inning nonetheless. Yeah, Perkins last worked in Chicago last Wednesday, pitched a shutout inning, even though the Twins lost that ballgame 8 to 2. Perkins making his 46th relief appearance. Very good ERA. Work with five of the 22 saves the Twins have out of that bullpen. There's Santana leading off the ninth, and there's ball one. Santana, Lopez, and Brantley in the Cleveland ninth. Just missing inside, 2 and 0. Indians picked a bad time to go into a hitting slump. They haven't done much offensively in this series. Three and zero to Santana. All fastballs inside by Perkins. Leadoff walk here in the ninth. Perkins had to warm up last night as the Twins uh, gave away some runs late. Tyler Robertson gave up a two run home run. Luis Perdomo had a hard time throwing strikes and Twins had to get Perkins uh, warmed up. Casey Fien ended up finishing up the ball game. Here is Lopez. Yeah, that walk right there, the first walk given to up to the Indians here this afternoon. One strike to Lopez. Snap bat. Save at first. Casilla, of course, has a shortstop's arm at second base, and he made it close with a strong throw to Morno. Uh, just wondering from this view right here if the barrel of the bat was going to just stay with the ball. It stayed with the ball for a while. Not hardly hit. But look at the barrel of the bat. Follow the ball. There's the ball just slowly hit to Dozier and a quick return throw by Casilla right there. He got rid of this ball quickly with something on it. But Lopez stayed out of the double play. Yeah, play. I think it was in Kansas City. Jamie Carroll at second base. And the Bat, the splintered bat sailed past his right ear, and the ball got to Carroll just a split second later, and he was able to concentrate on the baseball with a twirling bat. It's a fly ball to left. Willingham shouldn't make the play. And that's out number two. Brian Dunsing thought he would be pitching out of the bullpen if at all today and instead got the start and what a uh, job he did shades of Vic Alberry way back in the 70s you know don't tell him he's going to start till the last minute and he'll pitch a gym <laughs> and Brian Dunsing pitched outstanding and when you throw strikes you get good defense and he has some good defensive plays made behind him especially to see off the bat of Kochman in the third inning so Jimmy John's delivery of the game goes to Dunsing down and in ball one Vic Alberry huh yeah Vic Alberry they wouldn't tell him until the day of the game that you had the baseballs in your locker <laughs> and he go out and pitch a gym. If you told him he's going to pitch in three days, he was a nervous wreck. <laughs> Left handed pitcher, Nick Alberry. Wore a toupee. Boy, did I have fun with that toupee. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. I hit that thing all over the place. He took it off and it was gone. <laughs> one and one. Lopez goes the second. Twins don't care. One and two. And Dolman going out to a Perkins just makes the runner at second. What sign is they're using? Another great crowd here at Target Field starting to get on their feet. Over 111,000 fans showed up this weekend. 
popped up. Morno across the line, flips the sunglasses down, and the Twins have swept the Cleveland Indians. Kevin Gordon, this homestand couldn't have gotten off to a better start. A couple of thumpings on Friday night and Saturday night, and uh, a win today might best be described as methodical. No doubt about it. We'll break it down, Dick, on Twins Live, presented by Century Link. Three consecutive quality starts. Ben Revere revving it up. We'll hear from Ron Gardner. Our instructor will teach how to play catch with a purpose, and we'll preview the series with the White Sox next on Twins Live. Morning.